Kramer. With the muffler, Ryan Bruckner, I'm Mike Big Tobacco. Ryan, and this is my intro. We are on location at the beautiful Skirball Center in Los Angeles, California, at the Lee and Lawrence L. Raymer Garden. Beautiful, beautiful scenery here. We're surrounded by, by, by such, such vibrant colors, and there's a wonderful lily pond across the way. Um, I've never been to the Skirball Center before. How am I doing today, buddy? Are you going to stand up the whole time and just look at me? Because <laughs> that's kind of I weird. thought we could walk around. I mean, it's such a pleasant atmosphere here. We just went to the Noah's Ark exhibit with your boy, and there was all this interactive stuff to do. My apartment smells like methane gas, and I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I mean, nothing says Survivor Series weekend like going to a cultural center with a Ruth Bader Ginsburg exhibit. This sitting on a bench that's in memory of Joseph Sion. Joseph Sion. Oh, the Joseph Sion We're bench. We're on the Joseph Sion yeah. bench. Beautiful. Do you think every one of these benches is dead? Look, this one's dedicated, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. M- Mike, you should just remain uh, stationary, I think. All right. Well, here, let me take the cans off. Um, so, yeah, we we are here because... We went to NXT War Games last night, and uh, since we were going to record a podcast anyway. Fanny Fishkoff, by the way. Oh, it's a Fanny Fishkoff bench? Yep. Probably should have sat on that one instead. So I stayed at Mike's apartment last night, um, probably recovering from some sort of brain damage because of the fumes no. that I inhaled. No, 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 no. Immediately no. walked <laughs> in, and I was like, it smells like gas in here. Yeah. And he, and he got upset that I smelled the gas. Well, I, I was upset because I had this complaint basically 100% of the time I have company over. So first it was my mother's like, it smells like gas. So I actually called the gas company and they, they did something. Um, you know, I, I wasn't there. I wasn't on the property. Um, but apparently it's still there. I honestly, I think there's there's some sort of like like methane in the paint or something like that? Or is that sulfide, perhaps, something like that? Yeah, I can't it's smell definitely it. definitely smells like natural gas. I can't smell leaking it. Leaking from a, an appliance I got to call a, a again because uh, actually... Uh, I'm lucky to be alive. No, 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 no. Cause, I'm I mean, lucky look, to be alive. So I, I will call probably... Can I call SoCal Gas like today? It's Sunday, I don't wanna, so probably not. Uh, Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> He'll be fine. <laughs> made it yeah. this far. Yeah, you've made it this far. But I think it explains, you know, a lot of the way that you act and treat others. Yeah, just Your kind of on edge. You mean it's it's kind of uh, it's excelled lately. It's enhan- it's been it's been enhanced. It's kind of you know it, you're riding steady. You're riding steady. I feel hazy, man. Like I'm functioning at about the same charge as my phone, which is like twelve percent. Right well, now, and you didn't which get. It's unfortunate because all of my notes are on my <laughs> phone. <So. laughs> you didn't get kicked out of Noah's Ark, so that's no. Something. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, that was a hoot, actually, and it looked like Owen was. Owen just cares about steps. That's all he does. Yeah, he he's lo- just like he's a oh, step climbing. Look, machine. these are just normal stairs. I'd rather. I think hang out uh, here. for me, the highlight. Of, no, we're uh, not taking the elevator. The highlight for Noah's Ark is that they have fake poo for the kids to clean yeah. and throw. That's really cool, and it's yeah. squishy. Yeah. I, I didn't expect like a, it to be squishy, so I actually had a reaction to it. Like, bucket. ooh, yeah, yeah, this is the bucket of poo. It looks just like I've been feeding Dusty, my dog, this new uh, food. Yeah, and so it's it makes his poo like dark, like that it's color, like black. Really, blackish dark. Doesn't that brown. typically mean you're constipated? No, it's just the color of the food that he's eating. It's like really dark, and mm-hmm. that's all he's eating. D- so. Did you uh, poo at my apartment? I did. Yeah. You know, it actually was a, a pleasant experience for oh, me. That's good. Yeah, I but liked it. You I'm have a nice bathroom. It's oh, clean. I appreciate it. Did you clean before I came over? Clean your toilet? I, 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 wiped, I wiped down the counters a little bit. I vomited in your toilet last yeah. night. Yeah, we had uh, obstructed view seats. Yeah. And I'm trying to and f- come up with a, 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 an art, a, a beautiful thing, poetic... Is, they usually tell you on your ticket if your view is obstructed... So our view of the ring was not was obstructed. Was not obstructed. But our view of the screens, of the, screen. the yeah. jumbotron, yeah, completely obstructed. So I gotta say, although watching it again this morning, it was a really good event. It was. 
I couldn't really get <laughs> everything that was happening. We weren't connected. Yeah, we didn't connect with what was happening and, in the ring and, and the stories being told because we couldn't really look at the screens and at facial expressions. Staples Center basically was just, this is, we're hosting this event, all right, but we're not going to do, we're not going to go out of our way. It, it, they kind of separated themselves from from the NXT brand because it wasn't on any of the screens, you know, walking around in the hallways and stuff like that. It wasn't very inviting, and I wonder if that's going to be the same, uh, the, the same thing's going to happen at, at Survivor Series, which takes place then today. Maybe they step it up at Survivor I bet Series. They do. I, I think that they just had the screens higher because they had to have the double cage but just that over simple. the rings. I mean, at WrestleMania 31, we were further away, obviously. This is a stage, But we got to see and, everything and we got on to the see screens. Everything, and we were connected because these giant L LED monitors yeah. were just stunning. Same thing at WrestleMania 32. I, I was even further away because it's a bigger arena. Yeah. And I still got a decent view of everything that was happening. Kind of in the same way, like the same proximity that we were in the very last row to the action. That's how, like, the same proximity it, my body is with my mind right now. Like, I'm in such a haze. I can't think of, like, anything to say. I'm so sorry, man. No, I'm well, so sorry uh, about the gas. It's not gas, though. I'm telling you, it's the paint. I think you, every time we do a podcast, you're like, oh, I'm just off today. Oh, Why do you I think just, I do that? Because you're inhaling dangerous amounts of gas oh. <laughs> on a daily basis. Oh. And that's why you're no, off. No, 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 no. It's just so subconsciously I, I'm setting the bar low so that if I under if so I overperform, it's... the bar? Yeah. It, under it, promise, over deliver. There you go. Something like that. Got it. What was your favorite part of the Noah's Ark exhibit? I told you. <laughs> the poo, right? <laughs> Other than the poo. <laughs> okay, question number two. <laughs> That's how you find things out about people. You have an organic conversation. <laughs> so are you going to ask me what my favorite part was? Let's, let's uh, recap You're yesterday. Not gonna... Let's recap yesterday. All right. So you come I, over. I came, I came over. It took me 20 goddamn minutes to find a, a space in your neighborhood. Yeah. How do you live like that? Every day you come home no, no, and no, no. you I, have to Every day was not nearly for a space. No, 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 no. Every day was not nearly as bad as it was yesterday. That was there was some sort of event going on on Beverly as you said, so it, it was yeah. it was ridiculous. And I got my tricks and uh, you know what it's the only it's, it's the only walking I you do. To find a, find a space. Uh, and what's the furthest away from your apartment that you've parked? Okay, well, never a full, you know, city block, you know, so, I, so, but definitely closer. So I'm, I'm by, by Normandy is the main thoroughfare and the other thoroughfare westbound is, is Western. And so I've, I've definitely parked closer to Western. So that's probably like six blocks away. Oh yeah. It's, so you park downhill. I, I, like I, I have to, hill. I have to mentally, um, um, fool myself basically because I, I, I just try to find whatever pleasure I can out of it and for me it's the walk I figure well at least I'm getting like some semblance of exercise so I walk briskly and I, I'm sure to I, I, I try to get my heart rate up and stuff like that's that that's good so that's good but are there um, any good like restaurants or shops on the way no yeah look like actually if, when if I was I driving around Beverly, Beverly I saw that there was like a Guadalajaran Salvadorian restaurant yes yes um uh El El Chavocho. Is El Chavocho it's good? It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 really good. They have they have good ceviche. They have uh let's see, what do they have? Um they have pupusas. Oh nice. They're pretty good. So I got, I got to your apartment, uh pounded, But anyway, to answer your, two beers on an empty stomach. To to answer your question though, yes. It's taken me more than thirty minutes sometimes. Okay. And and yes, I feel like crying when that happens. I feel miserable. I, I think like I, I always it's picture life myself. In LA. I always picture myself as as like a, a twelve year old boy and just being so. You know that song "Walking in L.A." Nobody walks in L.A. Well, yeah, you do when you're. That's it's a lie. Mike, yeah. Mike walks. When you got street in LA. parking, you're walking plenty. <laughs> Mike walks in L.A. So, and it's definitely the, the 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 worst part about you know my living experience, but you know it makes other. Like parking, like for around, around work in Burbank, because we have kind of limited parking. I'm just parking on the streets. Like this is a piece of cake. What are you talking about? 
you know? So it, it's as, it wasn't as bad as it was in Long Beach. And maybe I'm just so used to it because I lived in Long it Beach. It was bad in Long again. Beach? Long Beach was miserable. Long you didn't Beach even was, really was even live worse. in like the, uh, the main like bar area. No, but, but that I have more memories of just of, of just sheer desperation, just circling around. Please, my God, find an opening. And it's never gotten <laughs> to the point. <laughs> Please find an opening. <laughs> <laughs> and, but Is it's that never gotten what happened point. when you lost your virginity? <laughs> Please God! Please God! <laughs> Help me find an opening! <laughs> tell me what to do! <laughs> tell me what to do! <laughs> Could you put it in for me? That's my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong hole, fool! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so then I get to your apartment and I pound two beers immediately on an empty Already stomach. Already ornery, but but you you have such a peaceful man, and uh, that you you didn't really sh- showcase how how uh, you know. We took our our lift to the Staples Center. Yes, we did, and then bef- we drank giant steins of beer at Tom's Urban across the street. But before that, you did a headstand, which was quite impressive. I did a headstand. You took a picture. You sent it to your uncle Bruce, and he did not. I'm thinking that he would give me some sort of validation. He does yoga. He's he Zen. Gave He's me peace. Nothing. He didn't even respond. Yeah, and aren't I feel you like in your head like about my it? dad now? That was I'm intentional. Like, it's like I was at the uh, little league and I hit a home run. My dad was there. No, he was and taking he didn't a say, piss. He didn't say anything. He scoffs even. He was like, you should have hit two. You know how Bruce reacted? He was probably like, my headstands are better. I have better form. I guess so. But you were at a, you were straight as an arrow, man, 180 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually harder to make your legs at a 90 degree angle. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah, that's, that's like rough the, on your abs. That's the next step that Ooh, I'm going to try to that's do. That's the next level headstanding yeah. right there. Because it's really more of a forearm standing, though. Are you even placing your head on the floor at all? The top of your head's on the floor, but the forearms are, like, helping you yeah. stay up. And your hands behind your head are protecting I was neck. impressed because you were like, do you want do you want to watch me do a headstand? And I was like, no. I don't <laughs> care about your stupid fucking head headstand. <laughs> on location, I still got my swear jar. I'm not going to watch myself. And I got six rolls of... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm so tired. You know what the problem is? It's like... <laughs> we, had a, we had a slumber party. <laughs> we had, no, we had a we slumber to, party. We went to bed at like 10 o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but we didn't sleep well. We s- you slept on the couch, you poor thing. I slept through the night. I slept a good... Nine yeah, but hours. you're never sharp when you have a slumber party, right? I'm so I mean, sharp. You didn't I'm sharp as a tack. Really? Yeah. Because okay. I haven't been breathing. All right. Well, then say something smart. Then I'm trying to tell you what my day was like yesterday. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the people, the audience wasn't. No. Oh. You son of a bitch. Okay. Uh, so we did some guerrilla marketing. We left our flyers. All over different yep. urinals. Yeah. <laughs> only we only market to men. Yeah. In the that, urinal. <laughs> that, <laughs> so you could just piss all over yeah, our people faces. People were pissing all over our podcast. I was having fun handing them out. I, I was mean, handing them out. I wouldn't mind personally. if people pissed all no, over that'd us be awesome. in other ways. And know, I wanted to get take a, words. You took a picture, right? I took I a did. couple pictures. Yeah, because that's yeah. just a funny image. I wanted to get a picture of me while it's I was on our pissing. Twitter. Yeah. Right, Guerrilla cool. marketing. It was liked by a few people. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, matches. No, but I, I was... So when we actually watched the event, I honestly, I didn't get much of what was going on in a lot of it. I, 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 I really... It was hard to decipher what was happening during the actual War Games match. Would you agree? During the actual War Games match, yes. Like, there was one part... Yes. Where they where Adam Cole and Ricochet were both hanging up on the top of the cage for a while. And uh later when we wa- when I watched it this morning, uh Moro Ronaldo was really kind of go- saying like this is a brilliant strategy because if you if you get out of the cage, you're you lose. Yes. You're eliminated. And so Adam Cole was baiting Ricochet to follow him up there so that the rest of Undisputed Era can then gang up on Ricochet right. and try to push him off. Right. And 
that yeah. was very clever. And, and yeah, I missed that. Another I thing I got all of the the high high spots, but I just wasn't wasn't partly, connecting. I wasn't connecting. Partly that's my fault as well because um, I had. Uh, two beers with you beforehand and then we had that giant goblet beforehand as well that's probably like 32 ounces and i had a a sam adams winter lager so that's probably you know closer to six percent than five percent is my guess and then three more adult beverages at staples center i would say so by the by that time i I wasn't really I, i wasn't one thing that sticks out is when they were all facing off that was cool and that that was was memorable yeah one um, thing that we missed, but it that was on the rewatch when uh, <laughs> when Tommaso Ciampa threw papers at Moro Ronaldo yeah. mid sentence. That's like maybe <laughs> those monsters. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> His reaction. Was oh! like, yeah, you can't experience that. <laughs> isn't it always better? Like, isn't that sort of like the best part though? Is watching it, rewatching, rewatching it. it yeah. You know, like that night. Yeah. And I had to put it on because you can't sleep without any content on, can you? I can't. You just can't sleep in a quiet room? Yeah. What about white noise, like rainfall or a fan? No, I, all I heard was like the noise of gas leaking into your apartment. There was no, it doesn't make, <laughs> there's no hissing sound because the fan masks it. Um, well, anyway, rewatching it, it was a hell of an event. It was great. Because yeah. uh, I, 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 I still had a lot of fun. I knew I was, I just, I had the wherewithal to know if this you asked is me to good. recap the whole event, after, like yeah. when we were leaving Staples Center, I would have had a hard time. I, yeah, I'd have a hard time. And and, time and, and too. watching Velveteen Dream on the replay and just his psychology and his awareness, just breathtaking. And I wasn't moved the way I was there, so I did not connect. But I did know that I was experiencing great a high level of professional wrestling. So I appreciated it and I knew that it was other intangibles other than the performers and and watching it back only confirmed that cuz it was another stellar NXT event. Every match on there was was was, was superb, I thought. Yeah. And hey, who knows? Maybe some guy pissed on our faces and then cool. decided to subscribe. I had to experience the there vel- at the toilet. Yeah. Velveteen Dreams uh I had experienced his entrance alone by myself. That was out at the concession stand, but I peeked through the curtain, so I didn't miss it. And it was an homage to Hollywood Hulk Hogan oh, as yeah. the event took place. Yeah, and then his downtown Ova. Los Angeles, N- NWO Ofa. shirt. He's O-V-A. great. He's the best. He's he, a, he could be like The Rock if they let him. Yeah, uh, uh, Alistair Black's entrance was probably my my. The kicks in that match were stellar. That yeah. I was reacting in the moment then um yeah, i mean you could hear him all the way in the nosebleeds yeah oh and and i just love how the the, the ring is mic'd yeah that's 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 excellent um but you know we're just spoiled brats you know we're seeing a high level of like kevin steen and el generico just three rows back we can touch the ring if we want to yeah i mean we've experienced that and that's something we'll probably never be able to experience again as pwg's moved to a bigger venue now well, it's still not that big. <laughs> well, how big is the venue? It's like the it's a theater, so oh, it's like, like Ace Hotel. I mean, I think they can seat maybe like six hundred people. Yeah, how many events and have they the held? The old there? one was like, and the the Legion Hall was like four hundred. Yeah, and it smelled like ass. Wait, it so smells like gas? No, it smells like <laughs> ass. <laughs> gas? I wish it smelled like ass. Christ, Helen, did a cow shit in I here? Ne- I nearly died. I, gosh, it's fine. It's not, it's the paint. <laughs> it's the paint. Just keep telling yourself that. So uh, It's the lead in the paint, man. I came to a realization, and maybe that's why the urn has really cursed us so much in like the last year. Yeah. I was watching uh, David Arquette in a match at LA Confidential nearly die and nick his jugular. Nearly died? And I, I heard like, he was having a, a match, second. but I... He's a f- goddamn former WCW champion. Yeah. Here he is having a hardcore death match in oh, front of 200 any, people. You don't have a David Arquette? Don't have David Arquette movies in the urn. Oh. We've, the urn is angry at us. Maybe. It's saying, like, put all four screams in here. 
The only one that's in there is r- Ready to Rumble. Yeah, I think we could watch we could Scream. Put every single David Arquette movie. I know, of course. Never He's like, been hello. Kissed. It's right in front of <laughs> what you. What else we got? Got Never Been Kissed. Uh, you got Scream, Airheads. Scream Two. Airheads. Yeah, Airheads. He was the first one to get to leave to escape, and then he wanted to yeah. come back in. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, bro. You shouldn't have escaped then. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry, David Arquette. Hope your jugular is okay. Hope you didn't too, lose too much blood. His jugular? What do you mean, man? He nicked his jugular with oh uh, my gosh. light tube. Are you serious? Yeah. Is he going to die? He might be dead. I haven't checked Twitter. Oh, my gosh. So uh, it was a hardcore match, right? Yeah. It was a death match with light tubes. And he did like a. Uh, so it was he like did a fluorescent. Launches out of the ring holding chairs. Jesus Christ. Yeah. There was another wrestler that broke his leg during did he the like, event. Did he make it to the finish of, of the match? He no-sold the finish, was going to walk out holding his jugular shut. Then he oh. went back in, did like one spot, and then took the pin. And wow. then was taken out of, in the hospital, to the hospital. Oh, he was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, That'd I be love a good one. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Yes. Think of all the possibilities. Hmm. All right, Ern, I will feed you David Arquette soon. And what if he just spits it right back at, at us? Boom. Scream yeah. three. You're welcome. Um, okay. I guess let's just talk about the movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was your favorite part about the Noah's Ark exhibit? <laughs> the part where you talked about repossessed. Movie number. Film number. <clears throat> 59 hold on yeah film number 59 of 5,992 repossessed starring Mean Gene Okerlund and Jesse the Body Ventura it wasn't Jesse the Mind no because I would have said oh, SCC okay. alum Jesse the Mind Ventura this is Jesse the Body Ventura Jesse the Heart Ventura mine fell the hardest Jesse the Spleen Ventura it'll now be Jesse the Elbow Ventura <laughs> Jesse the Soul Ventura. There you go. <laughs> ah, I did it again. See, so, the problem with the uh, notepad is that when you hit the little trash can button, you can never retrieve it again. <laughs> you fucking deleted your... There's a recently deleted part, oh, you dummy. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> the darkest How souls the are not which choose to exist <laughs> within the hell of the abyss. That was when I deleted them. Uh, How the hell do you location. keep deleting your notes? I'm using the same app as you. I've never deleted my notes in my know. life. Thursday. Okay, no, never mind. It's good. <laughs> no, I just, I just closed it. It's all that <laughs> gas you're breathing in, man. No, no, no. It's really messing with you. What would you think of Mean Gene Okerlund and uh, Jesse Body Ventura's performance? Uh, Gene I Okerlund felt like blew they it. had a lot of fun. They like, had a lot I of fun? I could tell that they were like, hey, we're going to make a couple bucks. We're just me, yeah. and, me, and, me and Gino. Jesse Ventura We're going to hang awesome. out and just crack lies a little bit. Do you notice that Gene Okerlund is so... They were both holding mics, right? And they were basically yeah. commentating the final repossession, which is televised globally yeah. on network television. And It had a real big fight feel. Gene uh, yeah, yeah, Gene Okerlund was so conditioned to asking a question and then handing over the mic that he kept doing it. He did. Every question he asked Jesse Ventura, he would hand him the mic, even though Jesse Ventura yeah. was on mic. He's a shitty actor. Yeah, yeah. He can't live in the moment. Yeah, exactly. Or he's just... I think uh, what I really liked was hearing Jesse Ventura say, Conolingus. <laughs> 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 it's the Conolingus. <laughs> I was like, is that a wrestling move? <laughs> There's a steroid uh, joke in there. Yeah, yeah. We don't do steroids... Anymore in professional wrestling or less. <laughs> <laughs> Steroids aren't used in wrestling anymore. Or less. Or less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do you think of this compared to Spy Hard? Two lesser known Leslie Nielsen spoofs. This was at first I was going to say this was better. Like first I was going to say this is worse and then a girl takes her top down in a classroom I'm like this is better (laughs) but that's like within the first 10 minutes yeah so yeah it was better at at that point like 30 minutes in I was like I like it better and then it just started dragging like it was not funny in a lot of parts like uh, oh there were some cringe worthy parts like 
the rap part where the priest raps. That was bad. That was so bad. That was bad. And but it but it was at least loaded with jokes. Yeah. It's like the pace was still there, which is why it's so difficult to like type notes during these spoof movies because you can't look down. Yeah. It's like there's so uh, much co- it's just loaded with lousy jokes. The the part where it showed the outside of the school and it said stock footage. Yeah. Of the University of Chicago in Pasadena <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. It kind of um, had like a stay tuned vibe, I thought. Yeah, it with like kind of odd with network like the, promet- programming and, yeah. and like standalone sketches on TV. Yeah, and I kind of wanted them to explore that further. Uh, yeah, a little more of that would have been nice. Very raunchy, lots of like yeah. horny humor. Like a horn, he's a pr- horny priest, and he's with the body by Jake guy, and he's got like a heart monitor, and every time he sees like a hot girl, yes. <laughs> His uh, heart monitor goes off. Yeah, and, and then, you know, you got an exercise montage with all of these hot girls in pr- yeah. provocative positions. And, and we see, we like, see a glimpse into really the dressing room, their, their like locker room. hot girls, the, man. Gorgeous. And <laughs> oh when we saw a rack in this movie, it was a voluptuous rack. It was like these... this They weren't messing around. This beautiful casting this director. This wasn't like, was like uh, these breasts Hell Comes need to Frogtown. To be seen. This was some real... These were real hooters. I have a very special place in my heart for those <laughs> breasts because there were breasts outside, lit lit by the moonlight. <laughs> hey, do you know anything about the moon? Like, do you know stuff about the moon? Like, Not do you really. know what creates shadows on the moon? Do you know like, why there's, like, crescent moons sometimes and why there's full moons sometimes and why there's half moons sometimes? Why are you asking me this? Because I was just looking at this perfect half moon last night and i was like huh i know absolutely nothing about the moon well it's because the uh sun is uh sh- is covering partially the right? sun yeah so i think it has to do with the relation and of the, the moon's yeah. position between the, the sun, sun and the, the earth, earth and the moon holy shadows spigot. yeah what was your favorite part about the Noah's Ark exhibit? <laughs> <laughs> there were some dumb jokes. I was really like the so uh, severe tire damage gag, where just instead of like the, the, the tire the popping, just a bunch of tires fall, fall on them. And then the handicapped parking spots that are just used by the handicapped. I really like si- uh, when sign. they were like, at this point, the kids hadn't taken acting lessons. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was funny. And then we were good. talking about, well, you know, everybody's last name you know, was their job at one point. And the kid's like, well, what, what about, about ja- John Hancock? <laughs> He's like, hmm. it's like, well, not that one. Is that guy Tom Bodet? He sounds exactly <laughs> like the Motel 6 guy. They had Ned Beatty in this movie, the guy from yeah, and uh, Deliverance. Deliverance. I was waiting the whole movie for a squeal like the pig moment. Yeah, nothing. Moment. It, Dick, when, when he gets, like, defeated by Satan, he gets put in, like, a jackass, uh, a donkey suit yep. or whatever. They could have just made him squeal like perfect, a pig. Perfect opportunity. That would have been so much funnier. Maybe, he just, maybe that movie caused such trauma for him that he refuses to ever recreate that. Yeah. You know? I really liked how the one son kept talking about how his mom had PMS. Yeah. You know, in PMS. fourth grade, I got in big trouble for saying... Like, to your mom? No, to one of my classmates that she had PMS. She's <laughs> probably PMSing over here. We were like playing... It's from watching all these shows and, at that exactly. time where and people we, were talking about PMS We didn't all know what that meant. Like, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. But, like, we just knew that like, it was when women are crazy. When <laughs> women are mad. And we were like playing like a class game of kickball. And this one girl was, like, freaking out about somebody breaking the rules and going off. And then I was like, it's PMS. (laughs) And, like, all the boys laughed. (laughs) And then my teacher was like, don't you ever That's because she's bleeding from her vagina at that moment. I couldn't, like, play anymore. She made me, like, go, like, sit away from everybody. Uh, I got, like, a note sent home. (laughs) That was horrible. <laughs> Did she show All you All because her, uh, of freaking Married with Children and Roseanne reruns that I was watching. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh my God. It was so prevalent. And I would say it just like as a, Mom, a, a verb. you have PMS. Yeah, I would say it all the time. I would say it frequently. It was in like my regular re- vocabulary. Yeah. And I didn't know what it meant, you know? Yeah. So when the kid was saying that, I was like, man, that was me. Yeah. Yeah. It must be PMS. And <laughs> you're going to do that when you're older, sis. The long they had a the whole exercising montage. Talk about the longest version of Pump Up the Jam 
Oh, I've yeah. ever heard. How is that possible? Like pump up they just the played it on a loop for, like for five and a half. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a two and a half minute song. Maybe pump it's up like the jam. The club extended mix. Like people just want to pump up the jam for as long as possible. So there's like a ten minute version. Um, hey, when when Ned Beatty was pitching the idea to broadcast this repossession on on network television to the studio head, did you catch a glimpse of any of those uh, new? new pilots that they were promoting or they were they were going to launch no. on the wall it was just the new and then whatever a show is already oh. like the new green acres the new yeah. petticoat junction they had like that's the pretty new, funny i remember when they had like the new leave it to beaver yeah do you but, remember that or like beaver was old now you mean the gim- oh really yeah it was like back during this time like early 90s they had oh. like the new leave it to beaver did they ever end up pursuing that beaver cleavage in WWE that they, was a mosh or thrasher or one of they, the I think he had like one or two matches and then they pulled it because it was just so it was incestual. horribly offensive. Yeah. <laughs> there was so it was many like, like horrible things that there they was did. incest That's going one on. of them. Like yeah. there was a son having intercourse with his mother. Yeah, it's like his mom. You still his like, blood mother. There were there were like Who 10 year old that? kids <laughs> going to watch this with their parents. And then there's Beaver Cleavage <laughs> having sex with his mom. Who came up with that? There's a kid there with his mom watching a character who's implied to be having sex with their mom. God. Attitude Era was ridiculous, yeah, man. Yeah, seriously. Absolutely ridiculous. There so that many, is inexcusable. Uh, 90s political jokes in this movie. Noriega references. Oh, yeah. This Oliver is a picture North. with you. And or- yeah, Oliver North. Bush's Bush on the Look, deficit. Uh, you sound like Bush on the deficit. Yeah, you got to throw in whatever's topical. I mean, kudos to them for actually landing Linda Blair to be the star of this. Yeah, I wonder if she had a lot of fun because she, she played the same exact character. Yeah. She's one hot tamale, she man. Is. I think she was really attractive. I looked her up. Guess what? She's, She's in the still... Mr. Skin Hall of Fame. Oh, nice. For her roles in Chained Heat and Red Heat. Oh, I'm all over that. And since this is an auditory platform, we're just all going to have to enjoy that later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Together. Look up Linda Blair, Chained Heat and Red Heat. She's in the Hall of Fame. Um, so I looked up what I gave Spy Hard. I gave it like a 3.4. I like this a little bit less. I give it a 2.7. Um, it was just you know it, low rent. It had it was and low it rent, out. but like they've they've wasted. They used all their best know, jokes good in the first thirty minutes. But it was still inundated with jokes, and I, I something about that is impressive to me. Just to just to boom boom boom, just thoughtlessly, <laughs> just kind of come up with crap jokes, because the pace there's a science to it, you know. But. I'll get Wally George makes an appearance. I like that. That was weird. <laughs> I like that though. Yeah. I like. What do you think of? Like, I kind of get Wally George for what it is. It's a character, right? It's a gimmick. No one yeah, is really is, like that. I just the way he looks, though. I find it disturbing. I, I like was, he looks like he'd be a, a character in the Texas Chainsaw yeah, Massacre. Yeah, sure. And so and the like, audience, I would see him on the TV. And yeah, like he would be yelling at people, right. and the and then all these reactionary people in the audience, like, yeah, yeah kill him. Yeah, it's, and it was just like, I it don't encouraged. Know, it made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, like it, there was like a bad vibe to it, and so I did not like. But it. all you could see it is like I would watch Jerry Springer. Yeah, but I couldn't watch. Well, Jerry Wally Springer George. wasn't political though. It, it was. It just wasn't kind political. Of violent. It was violent. It was you know like a, a crowd. It was too and, hot for TV. Yeah. Did you ever rent that? Yes, and I <laughs> and, and I, I was disappointed. I was I I was I was like God. I mean, they're breasts, I guess, but not that good. Not th- <laughs> yeah. I remember there was like this British guy who's like, if I go stripping, right? They just want to watch me. She goes out stripping, right? They want a shagger, and she just instantly <laughs> takes her top down. <laughs> it's just like, well, screw you, Glenn. <laughs> and she just shows her nipples. I was like, yeah, Steve, Steve, Steve. Or whatever. Remember when Steve got his own when show? Steve got his own show. Not like the the restaurant impossible guy, John Irving or whatever. Yeah. He's got his own guy. Robert name. Irving. Robert I've Irving. watched it. There's a bunch of episodes Ma- on Maury YouTube. rules the game. It is so exciting when Maury's he opens that envelope. Yeah. I was just like, so oh, Robert here it Irvine comes. One. He's going to open the envelope. Who's Robert the dad? Robert Irvine, he tries to be like a counselor. He yeah, tries to yeah, like solve people's the mark problems. In every, every it's way. too positive. 
I like yeah. Wally I, George is makes me uncomfortable. And okay, I, I don't but like it him. wasn't that the idea? I think like I, I know that to make Howard Stern uncom- despised that man, and he had him on the show a couple times, and all, all he would do was belittle him. And I, I'm surprised because like if this is a gimmick and a character, I, you should be able to. You know, he, I would think he would be impressed by that, you know. So maybe that really is who Wally George was. Maybe I don't know. Did anybody give ever a, actually ask him? I liked this more than Spy Hard, so I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a, a tree eight. Would you give uh, Spy? Hard? I have no idea. <laughs> you probably <laughs> like I just it, come up with that number. You probably gave it like a five. <laughs> I probably did. I probably gave it a lot higher. So all right, fine. I'm gonna give it this movie a nine point three. Uh, fun facts. Um, this was released a month after The Exorcist three. Fun in fact, the Mike has been breathing in methane gas for the past yeah, three and a half Mike months. Mike may or may not be alive by the next uh, podcast, depending on if he calls somebody to check out his gas pipes. You, bas- you bastard Venmoed <laughs> me for dinner last night, yeah. and it's just an emoticon of a coffin. <laughs> it's at 35 bucks towards my coffin. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully all your friends Thanks on Venmo your contribution, see man. <laughs> Mike received $35 for his coffin. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the funniest thing I've ever done. We need to do a fund me page. <laughs> Mike, it's probably not going to fund that. In The Exorcist, Linda Blair played a girl named Reagan. In this movie, her name is Nancy. Oh, I get it. I would have missed that one. The film received mostly negative reviews. Leonard Maltin's movie guide gave the film one and a half stars. And the review states, too few gags. Too many targets and a poor finale. Too few. Blair gags. and Nielsen are good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leslie Nielsen was good. At first, I thought because he's he's basically kind of narrating the film as an orator. He's like giving a lecture in a class. I thought, oh, he's really phoning it in here. He's probably shot all his stuff in one day. And then in the second and third act, right at the midpoint, he's involved. It's not yeah. just the young uh, up and coming priest. He's the main character. Oh, he, he does all he's of the, a, he's all the music in. spoofs. Yeah, and that was that was good. He does his he does his Rambo impression where he just crushes a can. That was funny. <laughs> so he Leslie Nielsen was great. His Michael Jackson was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um the film won a Golden Raspberry Award for worst original song. Yeah. Oh, didn't that sound like Britney Spears kind of? I kind of like the song. Re re yeah, re repossessed. Re 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 and then there was we started that chant at NXT at Staples Center last <laughs> night, dude. It was awesome. <laughs> we did. I don't remember that at Alistair all. Alistair Black. What was the <laughs> Alistair Black? <laughs> Alistair, Alistair, Alistair Black. <laughs> I wasn't getting it right. And then the guy in front of me was like, "I think we bothered the people around us. Were we loud?" I mean, we're at a wrestling show. Yeah, we're not at the opera. Yeah, but we were. I don't think we were that bad. <laughs> we were talking about <laughs> David Arquette movies, though. We were. I guess no, that's we wrestling related, though. No more fun facts? Um, no, that was the last fun fact. Did you notice that uh, that there was uh, another song in it, like when she's like wreaking havoc on all the religious leaders? And that was like, uh, it was like almost sounded just like The Devil Inside by NXS. It was like somebody just um, like remade The Devil Inside by NXS. I did notice that, yeah. That was kind of weird. Okay. And that was the same artist? So there are two original tracks? I think so. Okay. Well, I have the soundtrack, but it's been a while since I listened to it. (laughs) Hey, you don't have your laptop with you, right? I don't. Do you want to do like a little makeshift flick chart right here? Huh? Okay. Okay. (laughs) Do you have your... Do you have a flick chart now? Repossessed. Is it better than The Godfather? (laughs) No. Okay. (laughs) Yes. Repossessed. <laughs> I like it better. Is it than better Godfather. than Citizen Kane? No. Is Repossessed better than Casablanca? No. Is this bit working at all? No. Did you No, because you, you just come asked up with if this I, bit at your apartment? No. It makes sense if you did. No. Um <laughs> No, I was just looking up movies and well, okay, how uh, about let's uh, reach into this urn. No, I should have my own. I wish. Urn. I just wish I had my. Okay, is it better than one flew over to Coco's nest? 
See, um, I wish oh, I had my own flick chart. What? Yeah. What's the movie? The Did next you draw movie from? we are going to watch is Over the Top. Yes. Sorry, and Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. And a wrestler. And a wrestler. That big guy's a wrestler? Let me see who the wrestler is. It might be Terry Funk. Oh. Let me let me let me search. Because that big guy, that, that that guy, the big guy, who I don't know his name, um, the main big guy, you know, he actually uh, had a he had a he talked at my my junior high and he ripped a phone b- book oh, in man. half. Yeah, he's he, like, hey, uh, hand me this phone book, and he just took the the yellow pages and just ripped it in half. Everyone was just floored. Yeah, you Terry seen the Funk's teachers. Terry Funk's and over the top. There you go. I I really like this movie. A lot. Like, I've like never seen like, it. I've uh, always I, wanted to. So what I do is I have a hat, right? And I, I turn it upside down. I turn it backwards, and then I get really intense when I so start, uh, you know, doing I'm my, excited yeah, doing to see it. This will be my first time watching Over the Top. Me this as will well. Be your, this will be your first? No. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It'll be my first time watching Over the Top for in, in matters of reviewing <laughs> for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm Ryan the Muffler Bruckner saying... Gentlemen, as you know, the ultimate warrior, fuck it, has publicly stated that, <coughs> damn it, who put that up? Is that $200 an hour? And I'm Mike Big Tobacco Ryan. Andy Warhol, I thank you very much for joining us. Good luck. Uh, one of the greatest wrestling fans. Oh, always a pleasure seeing you. Good luck uh, here at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> <laughs>